All right. This is William Zaritsky, private investigator. For more information, visit my website, willzpi.com. All right, I just want to thank a few great pastors and scholars that are really doing God's work and really spreading the truth and the gospel. These men are Billy Crone of Get a Life Ministries in Niagara Falls, New York, uh, Dr. Scott Johnson, and Mike Horn. Also, I want to thank the pastors and scholars that, that helped get me started my investigations of conspiracy theories and end-time events, Dr. Jack Van Impey, Pastor John Hagee, uh, Peter and Paul Noy, and of course, the great Hal Lindsey. All of these men are men of God. And in Hebrews 13, 1, it says, Let brotherly love continue. And I have nothing but love for these guys. Now, interesting, uh, recently on Fox News, uh, the green police are out there. The green police are after you. They're um, in, inducing these $100 fines for not recycling, for not putting your garbage. It, it's on Fox News here. Uh, are the green police cleaning your streets? The article states here that um, they know what's in your trash. They know what you eat. They know how often you bring recyclables to the curb. And they are becoming to a town soon, to your town soon. That is, if they're not already there. Uh, there's a growing number of cities across the U.S. Local governments are placing computer chips in recycling bins to collect data on the refusal dis disposal and then finding the residents who do, don't participate in these recycling efforts and forcing others into educational programs meant to instill respect for the environment. This is America, or should I at least say it was America. Um, our rights are, are being taken away from us. They're telling us what we're going to do now. They're putting computer chip in a recycling bin. I'm not kidding. Check this stuff out. Um, it's uh, Thursday, September 9th is when this article was posted, 2010, on uh, one of the top stories. This is unbelievable. This is just part of of the things that are to come. And um, it's just amazing. Uh, folks, it's it's time to get ready. It's time to, to look at these things that, that are coming upon us. And uh, it, it's not even funny. Now, <clears throat> I was talking about the chemtrails on my last podcast, and... This leads into the project HARP and Bluebeam. Um, HARP, H A R R P, stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project. It was created in 1997. It's said to be the study of ionospheric physics and radio science. It constitutes a system of powerful antennas capable of creating uh, controlled modifications of the ionosphere. This is a billion watt high-frequency radio beam which penetrates the lower ionosphere and interacts with the currents of the auroral electrojet. Now, what does this mean in layman's term? Um, let me explain a little more here. During the modification, the pulsing beam stimulates the ionosphere, creating an ELF um, waves, which are more great distance through the lower atmosphere and penetrate through the earth to find missile locations, underground tunnels, and communication with hidden submarines. This technology also disrupts the earth, the earth's electrical system. This can also be used to manipulate climatic changes. This could also be a weapon that could set off volcanoes and trigger earthquakes. Um, for that, look into Luke 21:11. It's like playing God. And, uh, it makes me wonder, uh, you know, I live in Florida, and during the 2004, 2005, we had a series of, of um, hurricanes followed by Katrina, the big one. Um, I wonder if that was used, if this harp technology was used to set these hurricanes off. It just makes you wonder. Because it was said that they used that, at the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, when FEMA stepped in and, and was practicing gathering people together and uh, taking away their constitutional rights and all of that. So if that was a test, maybe they this is all planned using this technology. You'll be amazed at the technology that the military has that aren't telling us. I knew someone in the Air Force, 
And they told me that there's things that they have now that you can't comprehend. Now think about that for a minute. Can't comprehend. There's things, there's little things leaking out all over the internet. Some of them uh, I'm sure are, are fake or, or hoax, but some of them just give you that question of mine. How can a, can a uh, triangular uh, government looking aircraft with wings on it that you can clearly see become visible and then invisible, materialize and dematerialize? As Billy Crone always says, it walks like a demon, talks like a demon, it's a demon. So it makes you wonder, um, with all this technology, what's really going on. Now, also with this uh, Project Harp and Blue Beam, which I'm going to get into, there's these Gwen Towers, the ground wave emergency networks built uh, by the Department of Defense. And they're huge towers. They're said to be used for communications during... Uh, or after a nuclear strike. However, if a nuclear strike came, it would destroy all communication towers. So that, that theory of what, what the Defense Department is telling us is, you know, I find it's just a lie. Um, what these towers are actually doing is to work in junction with the HARP transmitters. Uh, its effects, effects on humans can alter thinking and lower resistance to diseases. So when you look at the chemtrails and you look at the Project HARP and all of these things that are going on, you know, you got to understand, if they can create a weak-minded, sick population of people, it'll be easier for them to control the population. But the real agenda is to kill off billions of people, reducing the population to around 500 million, as stated in the Georgia Guidestones. And that's another uh, thing I'll be talking about later in my other podcast. Because ultimately, Satan's agenda is to take souls to hell, create abominations to God and control all he can. And this is just another vehicle for him to achieve that. God's allowing this for a reason. So the government has been studying and experimenting with radio frequency waves since 1940s. The sound of silence, uh, silent sound spread spectrum. It was tested by the military in the 50s, which is a mind control experiment. It was used again in the 90s during the Gulf War, uh, called Long Range Acoustic Device, LRAD. I also saw them uh, in New York after the uh, 9-11 incident. Um, the physical and emotional effects of this technology were so severe uh, during Desert Storm that the Iraqi troops surrendered without resistance to the U.S. coalition forces. Now, this could be a reason why the government doesn't seem concerned with the militias and the gun owners, once this weapon is implemented, people will be under their control. This device is a silent communication system. Now, the ELF I mentioned before, electromagnetic frequency, and the VHF, very high frequency, are the ultrasonic frequencies used um, for inducement into the brain. This device allows unwarranted implantation of specific thought, emotions, and physical actions into unsuspecting human beings. The ultimate weapon, folks, is, is, is this mind control, and this Project Harp is part of it. The, si the, the Sound of Sounds program in the military. Look this stuff up. I'm not kidding. It's real. The technology that, that our governments have now is very real. It's very ominous. It's very sinister. Um, it's interesting, too, that, that when you look at the propaganda, you look at TV and Hollywood. There was a show called V in the 80s, and then it's been redone here recently, V the Arrival. It depicts a, uh, this very same thing. And this is a type of technology that the Antichrist will surely use to control people. I feel that... Well, my take on it is an implanted microchip, the radio frequency identification device, will work together with this technology, and that will set the stage for the mark of the beast. And that's in Revelation 13, 16 to 18. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his, on his right hand or on his forehead, so no one can buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. 
If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beasts, for it's man's number, his number is 666.